Hello, this is uh, Ken Inche speaking. And uh, in this uh, Zimmer dyna dynamic unit, this is the second section uh, about the heat direction. For direction, um, previously we've been talking about uh, how to balance an electrochemical reaction. And in this section, we're going to talk about uh, in that electrochemical reaction, how much heat will be released or absorbed by that reaction. The heat direction essentially is a, a key to, to evaluate uh, how much energy conversion between the reactant to the product. And from there, we're able to establish how much work to estimate how much work can be done by a fuel cell or the electricity release from the fuel cell and also the waste heat and uh, uh, idea cell voltage and uh, energy density of the fuel and so on. Now let's see what, how to calculate the heat duration or what does it mean. Uh, from this, we use a, a hydrogen oxygen as fuel cell as an example. This is a typical electrochemical reaction you already know. And uh, for the reactant is converted through the electrochemical reaction into the product, there's an energy change. And this diagram give a, a um, see how the energy change. At the beginning for the fuel, the hydrogen and oxygen have the uh, possess the chemical energy we call the H1. When they feed into the fuel cell, because the electrochemical reaction is will convert some energy into delta G, we call the electricity, and the sun we call the Q, the heat release, and the, the exhaust will be the H2O and the possess the energy called H2. So from the energy diagram, we may think uh, at the beginning we might have a higher chemical energy H1 the hydrogen and oxygen. Through the electrochemical reaction the fuel in the fuel cell is converted into the water and then the energy drop from H1 to H2. So the difference, the chemical energy was released and the part of generated electricity and the rest is the heat. Now how we know the, the energy level for this? That we call is a uh, heat of formation. So that uh, for given typical reaction, and uh, there's a uh, heat of reaction associated with uh, this chemical reaction or electrochemical reaction. It might be um, positive value or negative value depends on this reaction is the exothermic that release the heat or endothermic reaction is a uh, absorb heat. Then we can calculate this one by um, to evaluate the heat of formation or the enthalpy of the product minus the, the heat of formation from the reactant. The difference between the uh, reaction before and after the energy level, then we can take the is a heat of reaction or the reaction heat. From this case uh, is a um, the product is water, so we had to find the, the heat of formation of water and minus the heat of ratio of hydrogen and the oxygen. Over here, they all heat of ratio based on one mole per mole of the uh, the reactant. So over here is a one one and a half. So over here we had to divide multiply by one and a half. So from the table, actually you can find. Uh, uh, from the standard chemical engineering or chemistry handbook or physics, you can find that the uh, heat of formation of liquid water, this is in liquid form, and the heat duration for the element hydrogen and oxygen, by definition, they assume it's zero here. So from here, you substitute all the value into this equation, then you can calculate the heat duration or the delta H, or you may say the change of entropy. And it's a give you uh, 286 kilojoule per mole of hydrogen. Over here, we more key on the fuel because this is the price, this is the cost for this, and this one come from air, so usually we don't care about it. So in this case, there's more uh, per hydrogen the fuel. For the same reaction, the 
heat release, the heat ration heat or the heat ration might be different. It depends on the state of the the water. So in this case, the instead of the liquid water, it generates the gas phase. That means the water vapor. How what will be the heat reaction? And we can substitute the same equation, but instead I use the liquid form. Over here is the gas state, uh, the water. In that case, you check on the, the table, you can find the formation of water vapor. Uh, over here, there's a minus 242. In this case, you calculate the heat duration when the generated water is a vapor or the steam inside liquid water, then the heat release is a two, 242 kilojoule per mole of hydrogen. So this one is a vapor phase that depends on the phase, the state of the, the product also. Of course, we can ask, we can think about how about this? It might be liquid or solid state, but in the ambient temperature and ambient pressure, usually it stay as a gas phase. So usually we don't use this to uh, uh, check the liquid or solid state uh, phase. So the, this is the gas phase we had checked, and then they will come out with uh, the formation of water. So we calculate. And then we think um, the energy release from the, the hydrogen and oxygen, the chemical energy, and then goes through the electrochemical reaction, or you may say the combustion reaction, and the generate the water. Depends on the water is a gas phase or liquid phase will be different the 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 heat release and that will be the effect on the how much electricity and heat are released from the fuel cell reaction. So if you think uh, um, the from the hydrogen and oxygen uh, produce the gas phase water or water vapor. This that would release 242 kilojoule per mole of hydrogen. But if it generated uh, uh, liquid water, in that case, the the energy state or the heat of formation of liquid water is much lower. So you will release more heat uh, energy from this uh, reaction. The difference between the uh, gas phase or the vapor and the liquid water is uh, depends on uh, is a uh, heat evaporation or heat condensation. So if you uh, change from the gas phase to the liquid uh, phase water, then that will release the heat condensation. If you uh, evaporate from the uh, liquid water to vapor, then this is called heat evaporation. The both is about uh, 44 uh, kilo joule per mole of water. So, and then we can check uh, the heat out reaction for the methanol, the direct methanol fuel cell. This is the uh, chem overall electrochemical reaction of the methanol inside the fuel cell. So based on the same principle, uh, over here at the table, we find that the uh, heat out formation for each species over here we're concerned. And then we substitute to the equation we mentioned before the change of enthalpy equal to the the heat duration of the product minus heat duration of the uh, or the heat of formation of the reactant. Over here, the, they had the two more of water, one more of carbon dioxide, and then one more of methanol, and then two thirds of more of uh, oxygen. So you substitute all this number into this equation, you can calculate the heat duration for methanol. And this one is a minus, so this means exothermic reaction. This means uh, you, you burn the methanol, you will release the heat. How much heat will release is uh, 727 kilojoule per mole of methanol. This is the exothermic ration. Um, the other one is the endothermic ration. That means the ration not going to release heat, but going to absorb heat, then this kind of reaction we call the endothermic reaction. So from here we uh, already know about how you can uh, balance and 
electrochemical reaction in a few cells. And then from the table, you also can calculate the, how much heat will release or absorb from the heat, um, the few cell reaction. Then we're going to next going to talk about the heating value of the hydrogen or the fuel.